What's going on guys? Dan with Right Now Powder Coating back with another video for you. Um, today we're going to talk about two subjects in powder coating. I thought I'd kind of combine them. Um, basically we're going to discuss how to fix damage that may have happened to your powder coating part as well as how to check out your mills and which will also help you fix that powder coating. So before we get too much into that let's just break into it. Let's go. All right, so most of you have powder coated things. If you haven't yet, we've got a whole bunch of videos on this channel to help you guys out. But if you have powder coated things, you have probably either messed them up, too light a coverage, too much coverage, you totally missed a section, um, you had a mark happen to it before it went in the oven, you didn't catch it, like a hook mark or something you didn't like. You had it bang off something, you had someone drop something on it, you scratched the powder surface or something like that. There's a million things that can go wrong with powder coating, um, especially after the part's done. So to fix that, we get a lot of questions. Do I have to strip it all the way? Can I just sand it out? You know, what's the proper way? So there's a lot of different options on how you can properly fix it. Um, if it's a part, like we do a lot of industrial parts now that are thousands of the same part. Typically, if we're light on the part or if there's a mark in the part, we will sand it out and then we'll reshoot it. Um, obviously, after we sand it, we'll wash it, dry it, put it back on the rack, get it into the oven, and then we'll uh, reshoot it. And there's techniques to that also when you're doing recoats. Um, if it's a really nice product or if it's a multiple coat project where you have like a silver base and a top coat or you're doing two colors with a clear coat, a lot of times unfortunately you're going to have to strip that all the way down. But I want to talk more in detail about how we fix damage when we're sanding it out. So I'm going to take you to the whiteboard and show you some drawings that I've put up. Alright, so this is just a little... Don't mind this, my daughters were in here. <laughs> um, th this is a top view of a part. So in this example, we're saying that there's a scratch through the part. And then this is the typical area of where you'll sand out that part. But then this is like where you really should be. So this would be looking down at the part. This is more of a side view. If you were to take a flat piece of metal and coat it and then expand that view um, and take a deeper look. So where we've got this shading here, that's where our metal is, and this would be our paint. Obviously not to scale, because typically your paint's not gonna be much thicker than your metal, but we're trying to make a point. So here is the gouge through the paint down to the metal, or close to the metal. And this is where some people might say, I've sanded out the damage, and it's good to go. So the problem with this is when you come back and you're coating over this, your powder is going to follow that very sharp edge that I just erased. Let's put that back in. So your powder is going to follow that. It's just going to flow right into that hole and come back up. Now if you were to take your sander and work your way out and start eating up more paint and making it less deep, more shallow throughout the whole length of the part, more like this. When you put that paint down, you're not going to have that hard edge around where you sand it. It's going to be more of a flat surface just because you've stretched it out. Now, if you want to get real fancy, you can actually spray powder in to this area, kind of like a filler or primer and then re-sand that flat, block it out, and then reapply another layer. The main thing is anytime you're using the sanding technique to then add more powder, is you want to get rid of all the gloss of the paint. So if it is a flat or satin, you need to scuff it up really good. We'll use 320 sandpaper. If this is really deep or bad, we may go to like 180, work it up to 320. We don't usually have coverage issues with 320 on a DA. If you're hand sanding straight, you may put straight scratches into it, which could then result 
in those scratches showing up. So just be careful. You may want to take it to 400 grit if that's a The other thing I want to talk about is your mills because if you put a ton of mills on that part, sanding it may not be the best case. For this example, we've got this uh, brake booster cover that was brought to us. Um, and we did a mill gauge test on it, and I'm going to show you that right now because it's got a lot of powder. So this customer put it on their, it's an old style, I think 56 Chevy, and then you flip up the, um, there's a little metal bar that you flip up over it to lock down that cap, and it just chunked the paint right off. So we're going to use our old mill gauge, and we're going to take a look at how many mills are on here. So this is our mill gauge. Um, I think we bought it from Prismatic, to be honest. So it's not the highest end, but I think it does a fairly good job. So we've already um, calibrated this in. It comes with a kit to do that, and we did that. So we're gonna go ahead and just place it here. So 15 mils of powder there. 19 there. That one's been sanded on. That's still 16 after sanding. 20. So that is a ton of mills. We usually shoot for three, three to four. Um, this is obviously a chrome and I with a clear coat, I believe. Yeah. So you've got to be super careful with that. Um, obviously, you can see the depth of the powder there. So this would be a prime candidate for stripping and redoing if you had this much powder because to get this to flatten out like this you're going to need a lot of surface area which you just don't have on this part so this would be a strip and redo um for sure <laughs> which we're doing anyways so it doesn't even i don't think they took the powder off the back so we're gonna strip this completely down and redo it. The customer picked out a different color. I try and talk people out of Chrome because I hate Chrome, but these are very, very valuable tools to have in your shop. And I want to talk about that a little bit more now. Before we get out there and check out that mill gauge, make sure to check out the notes below and check out all of our um, membership pages and everything. Also, check out our Electron videos. We are selling these guns now. If you are a powder coater and you are up and running, it's probably a better price point for you. At the time of this video, they are coming to you for $3,500 for the box feed unit. And we do have a lab unit we are going to be testing, which we are super excited about because we get a lot of smaller powder coaters that don't want to spend that $3,500. And this will come in a, a little bit cheaper, so it might work out better for you guys. So anyways, back to the video. We're going to walk out into my shop and we're going to test a couple of our parts. Um, the nice thing about having a mill gauge is you can actually help train yourself to be a better painter, but you can also train if you have a staff or anyone else that paints with you to be a better painter. Um, the way we like to do this is have a person spray a cart and then we'll grab some parts off that cart and we'll test them for the mills. And it'll kind of tell you, you know, if they know how fast they were going they know what the cloud looked like in the gun and all that kind of stuff so it will kind of tell them okay I'm putting too many mills down I'm not putting enough mills down I need to speed up I need to do less or put less powder on it or whatever they need to do so we're going to take a look at this part and see how our painter did all right so this is a trim piece that we code and like i said we shoot for like that three to four mils we don't get too upset if we've got two mils because we're covered we don't get too upset if we're at five mils um these actually all go inside of a wall and are never seen again <laughs> so that's pretty heavy that's four and a half so that's better three eight three seven See what the back side looks like. So this is actually the side that you would see. Three, three, four, three. It's not uncommon to get a little more on the edges. Two, five. So to me, that would be perfect. Two, nine. So this part I would be totally happy with, wouldn't have any problems with. Now these brackets that we have here, these actually have to go into a piece and slide. So we usually spray them a little lighter. 
Oh, two nine. So I would say that is a pretty well sprayed part. Two oh. So there we're a little bit lighter, which is what I would expect. Check the back side here. Two nine. So the nice thing about having one of these is you can have them paint a cart, or if they're super light, you can go around and see where they're light, and then they'll know where they need to slow down at. Um, this is just a quick video I just wanted to do real fast for you guys so you kind of have an idea of how to use a mill gauge um, in terms of training and then how to smooth out your parts um, so that you're not having to strip them completely. Um, a lot of times with these trim parts, if they get a mark in them or something, we'll end up sanding them out. Um, if you're doing really big things and you can't strip them, this is really handy for that. So as always, I appreciate every single one of you guys for watching this video. Uh, if you have not done so, subscribe, hit that like button, leave a comment, let us know you were here. Uh, check out our Electron gun. We are selling these guns now for Electron. Um, and I think there's going to be some more big things to come from them. So you're going to want to check it out. But we'll catch you guys on the next video.